On this episode, I start to make the radial axle assembly, and more specifically, the steel welded frame and brass bearing blocks. I give my new fly cutter a test run, and I get an opportunity to use my boring head as well. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the radio axle assembly. This is an original drawing of what I'm trying to make. This was designed by the original designer of the locomotive and used on many of his small tank engines. Now let's have a look at it in 3D. This is the assembly that will bolt into the frame. This is made up of some steel angles and some plates which support the rotary axle parts. Now let's take a look at how it works. The radial axle assembly allows the axle to move sideways and rotate slightly as the locomotive goes around corners. In this design, the axle boxes can actually slide and there's a cylindrical bearing arrangement to allow that motion to happen. This design is quite unique to Avonside built engines. Right, let's get started with the frame. When I was making angles a few episodes back, I made a few extras, so you won't have to endure that again. At this point I've already cut them to length, and I'm drilling the mounting holes to fit the frame. I start with a spotting drill, followed by the tap drill size, and then tap the hole. With the tapping complete, I prepare the angles for welding. I fit the angles in place before tacking them together in situ. Then I take them over to the bench for final welding. For this I'm using the TIG welder and I'm running a pretty low amperage because it doesn't take much to stick these together. And more importantly, I don't want to burn through the corners. Once the welds were complete, I gave the frame a quick clean up with a file and then it was off to the mill to drill some holes. I'm doing these after the frame was welded to ensure they're accurate in relation to each other as there are previously four separate parts. There's also some threaded holes here for some additional angles to be bolted on. the holes complete, it's time for assembly. I've already bolted the frame in here and there's a piece of 0.5mm galvanised steel fixed to the underside of it. I then have my mounting angles fitted and these plates that I'm fixing now. I actually found it was easier to assemble these on the bench as there just wasn't access to get to the screws while it was in place. You may be wondering why the plate has a V-notch in it. The reason for it is to clear the centre rail. Once that was all fixed in place, the next step was to make the cylindrical bearing blocks. These are made out of brass, about 10mm thick. The only brass I had that was big enough was some 60mm round, so I cut a couple of pieces off that. I then blew the part with a marker, and then laid it out with a scriber. This handy little square is great for marking centres, and with the centre found, 
I can set out the rest of my dimensions from there. Then it's over to the horizontal bandsaw to cut off the waste material. With the rough cuts made, I can square the block in the mill. I start by inserting parallels in the machine vise and zeroing the digital readout. Parallels are used to resist the downward cutting forces that the milling machine exerts. Once both sides are square into size, I can move on to facing the part. Once again installing parallels the correct height before inserting the part. I should also note at this point I've deburred the part. Each time the part's put back in the vise, it should be deburred. I'm giving my new fly cutter its first test today. I've had one previously that I made myself, but the nice thing about this one is it has an MT3 arbor, rather than a straight shank on the one I made. My depth of cut is about 1mm for roughing cuts and about half a millimetre for finishing cuts. It seems to really make a nice cut, but that probably has something to do with the freshly ground tool bit. Both sides faced, the next step is to clean up the ends. I do this with a 12mm end mill, and then making a first rough cut on the second end. From there I can check the length and make the final cut. I need a set of drilled and tapped holes in this block. So I locate these using the digital readout, starting with a spotting drill, followed by the tap drill size. A spotting drill is a short rigid drill bit that you can use to drill centre holes. If you're setting these out by hand, you could use a centre punch instead. With the holes tapped, I can move my attention to removing the material from the centre of the block. For this I'm using a 6mm end mill, and removing about 1.5mm of material per pass. I've also made up a steel fixture to support the part, as it will have removed most of the central material by the time I'm finished. While I was cutting this, I found I was having problems with the brass sticking to the end mill, so I thought I'd try the WD-40 trick that I quite often use with aluminium, and it seemed to work quite well.
While I had the small end mill out, I thought I'd cut this top recess as well, as the block in the original drawings had a hole cast in through here as well. I think it was actually for lightning, and this probably saved material, as it was a cast part. Once the holes have been machined, the next thing is to turn the fixture on its end. At this point I've got a hole to drill, and then I can get to boring the inside of the blocks. For boring the blocks, I'm going to use a small Criterion boring head. I picked it up in an online auction a while back. It has a range of up to about 40mm. The only downside is it's an Imperial, so I need to be a bit more careful making adjustments. The boring bars I'm using are carbide insert type ones. I find these to have a lot sharper cutting face than the brazed inserts. But maybe that was just me, because I never worked out how to sharpen them properly. I'm removing about a millimetre of material in each pass and using the fine feed on my mill. It's still tough to get a good surface finish with this. If you haven't seen a boring head before, they're kind of like an adjustable drill bit. The nice thing is you can adjust the cut to whatever size you want. This is just done with a hex key. So between each pass, you stop the mill, adjust it and then make the next cut. The final cut's made with reduced cutting depth and I feed it more slowly and that helps a lot with the surface finish as you can see. Final cut made, next step is to demount it, deburr the part and get it ready for assembly. I also used a square file to tidy up the other hole. And with the magic of video, it's all cleaned up and ready to go. The block can then be screwed into place, which completes the first part of this assembly. The next part to make will be the inside cylindrical bearing and the axle boxes, but they'll have to wait for the next episode. I still need to clean up the board faces, and I have a brass tube to fit through those holes at the bottom, but that'll have to wait for another day. It's great to be finally making some progress on this part of the locomotive, and this is another step closer to getting the rear wheels on. If you don't want to miss the next episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have missed any episodes, check out my playlist from the beginning. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time!